making this video right here about the DVX 200. This beautiful piece of machinery. I mean, this thing's been great for me. I just recently bought the Canon C100 Mark II. Uh, I dropped in price because it came out with the Canon C200. I was gonna, I was gonna sell this camera. I was gonna get rid of it, but I think I might keep it just because there's like a. a you know, a time and a place for it. The C100 Mark II, a lot of people were like, it's a great run and gun camera, you know, you can do everything on the fly, which is true and not true. Um, this camera is a great run and gun camera. You literally can, can get your shots and do what you need to do without switching lenses, without, you know, doing much. Everything's right here. The C100 Mark II, great camera as well, but it's not as easy to use as this one is. You have the flip out monitor, goes you know this direction you can't fold it flat or anything like that um, and you can't slide it back in this way it only goes in this way but awesome I love how they have that kind of hidden so your screen just stays protected ND filters built-in ND filters which is huge that's one of the main reasons why I bought this camera two SD card slots which is awesome uh, you can do relay so it records one and then continue recording onto the next card um, you can do, you know, backup card, things like that. You can do proxies. Um, so they have a lot of options where you can, with your record format, whatever you want to set it as. Um, then they also have an audio door to protect your, you know, buttons here from getting hit. You can still change your audio levels um, through the door, but you're not going to just bump them and hit them, which is really good. Supplies phantom power to any microphone that you have set up. It has, you know, the microphone mount right here for the shotgun mic. And then it has an XLR here and an XLR on the bottom, which is um, which is awesome that they have one right up here, um, right next to the shotgun mic. I have the, uh, the Rode NTG4 Plus. And before it wouldn't fit it wouldn't fit in here. Um, I'd have to have like a little rubber piece that I put in here, then put the microphone in. When I took it out, you know, the rubber piece would fall out. Um, but I saw online that a couple people use gaskets on their microphones, and it fit perfect. And it fits on my C100 Mark II and this camera, perfect. So I don't have to worry about losing a rubber piece. I just leave the gaskets on my microphone, and it and it's all set. You know, this has a built-in microphone, which works really well. Um, obviously, I would prefer to use an external mic, but this has saved me one time where my zoom was just messed up, and I had to use the audio from here, but it didn't come out that bad. Like, so I, I still was able to use it, so I was pretty, pretty hyped on that. The weight of it, it's very well weighted. Um, the handle here, too. It just feels really nice in the hand. It's a little heavy, like after a while holding it, but it feels really, really nice. Um, the handle too as well, it's very, you know, it's sturdy, it's not gonna break, it's not gonna go anywhere. And yeah, you know, a couple things that I just, you know, don't like about it is focusing with it. Autofocus, I think works awesome on this thing. You know, granted you have to ha have the center point, um, but I think it works really well. Manual focus, is a different story because it's not a hard stop lens like it's not a hard stop focus it's just keeps going and going and going so you have to like it's just weird how how it's set up um, you can change a couple of the focus settings in there um, like fast and just the way you the way you do it but I just find that manual focus is just not as easy as it is on like a DSLR lens or you know something like that so this has your true 4K, your UHD, and your 1080. You know, it does, uh, you know, 24, 30, 60, in 1080. It does that in UHD, and then it does 24 in 4K. The cool thing, it also does 120 frames a second in 1080, and two frames a second as well. So you can do like cool time lapses and things like that um, with this camera does it's infrared or it has infrared which is you know I never thought I would use it but I used it a couple times like I was up in Jackman 
and we were looking for moose and it was getting dark out. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I can flip on the infrared. And then another time my buddy was uh, doing stunts or whatever on his motorcycle and it was getting dark, it was getting late, we were about to wrap it up and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, let's try to get some shots with the infrared. I mean, the times that you're gonna use it probably aren't gonna be a lot, but just to be able to have that feature is kind of cool. And it, I mean, it works really well. It's, it limits you a lot to like your settings and things. It kind of picks what it needs to pick to get the best image. So you don't get to choose really much, but it still works. The one thing I, the reason why I bought these Canon C100 Mark II is because I, the one thing that I did not like about this camera was the color, um, the color science of it. The skin tones were just off. They were orange, they were green. Um, you can change the scene files in there. They have a couple, they have like four scene files already set. Every single one of them are horrendous. Um, they're terrible. There's a couple of people online who have made some scene files that you can download. And I just didn't find any of them worth using. Like they all just weren't really that good. So I messed around with the colors a little bit to try to match it as best I could with the Canon. It's all right, uh, it's still just not as good as Canon. Canon has the best color science I think there is. Um, at first I was shooting with my 7D Mark II and just the color in that is amazing. And then, you know, I got this and I was just like, damn, like, it's just different and uh, I just don't like it. But that's really like one of my only complaints with this camera or the reason why I'm gonna keep it is because I went out filming with my buddy. I do a lot of like run and gun, like on boats, film fishing, a lot of the up close and then you need a far away shot. And for me to have to switch lenses and, and do something like that with the Canon C100 Mark II, it's just time consuming and it's not worth it for me to like sit there and do all that and to, to bring this camera and to be able to have that wide shot and then zoom in if someone's catching a fish or have that macro setting. So you're not, you're not changing any lenses. Everything's, you know, right here in this camera is, is you know, awesome. I can't, uh, can't stress that enough how good this camera is with run and gun situations. And when you have the ability to switch lenses and put like a 1.8 on or something like that, a 1.2, 2.8, you know, you get that blown out background. With this, it's a 2.8 at the wide, and then it's a 4.5 when you zoom in. So you're not really blowing the background out. It's a little different look, but um, it's whatever you prefer, I guess. So this has some custom buttons on it, but these four user buttons right here, you can program to set to anything on the camera. Um, a lot of people have had problems when they, you know, your EVF has a sensor in it. So if you, you know, are filming and something blocks the EVF, it's gonna shut the LCD off. And so, you know, keep it up here, film like that. But what I did was set it to my user button one. So if I go, if I hit it once, it's LCD. If I hit it again, it's just EVF. And if I hit it again, it's auto. So it's back to, if you block it, it goes, you know, the screen will turn off or whatever. Um, my user button two is area mode. Hit touch the screen to focus on something and then touch it here or wherever else on the screen. And it's almost like a, you know, a little focus pole. Um, and it works great just to be able to have that, to be able to touch and focus on whatever um, is pretty cool. And then I don't have anything set on my user three. And my user four, I have set for macro. So I click that and then it, pops into macro mode and I can, you know, you can get super close to things. Um, one of the big things I like is, you know, the hood right here. Just to be able to have that, I think it's huge. Um, you're not losing lens caps, you're, everything's right there. Uh, works really good. So there's a record button on the top of the handle and also one on the back of the thumb. To be able to have all the features and the functions that it has is, especially for the price too, um, is really good. Like this camera has 120 frames a second, but my Canon C100 Mark II only has 60. Um, so I mean, I love this camera. I love the 
smooth zoom that it has. So, you know, on a DSLR or whatever, if you're using those lenses, you're gonna get that, you know, jittery zoom. With this, it's a nice smooth zoom. For certain situations, it works great. And especially, it's, it's not a good low light camera. It's a Micro Four Thirds sensor. It's not good in low light. Like I shot, I've shot a lot of things in very minimal light and you can see it's grainy, it's not good. Um, and that's where the C100 Mark II really beats this is it's, it's very good in low light. There's a couple down flaws to this camera, but all in all, it's a great, a great camera for the price and I just wish the color would be fixed, but it's whatever, I mean, I like it. I wish it fit on the Ronin. A couple of people I've seen online, they put it on the original Ronin just because the handle's too high on the Ronin M. My whole reason to get another camera was to just have one camera that can do everything. Just fit on my Ronin, have my handle do everything I need to do, like handheld, whatever. And it's just, it's not that yet. You know, there's camera, every camera is meant for something else. Um, my C100 Mark II is a great camera. It's a great, you know, studio camera, documentary camera, like commercials, things like that. Um, it's a 4K sensor and just down samples it to 1080. But I think for more run and gun and you really need to just like, it's, it's action is happening fast. I think that this camera beats, beats the, uh, the cannon out of the water. I mean, unless you're, you know, boom, focusing on, you know, and, and you got a 24 to, you know, 200 or something, you know what I mean? Like you, you need, this has the range. It's wide to the super long telephoto and, um, and you can also do macro shots and it's just, there's so many things you can do that I would have to switch lenses or do something else if I put it in my other camera. So I think I'm going to keep it, um, and see what happens. It does have V-Log. It does shoot in V-Log L, and that's like their flatter profile, which you can, you know, Canon has C-Log, and you can just, you know, do a little bit more with dynamic range and do a little bit more in post. I've shot like it, a, I've shot in V-Log a couple times, and I actually like how it comes out. I like, you know, you can play with the colors a little bit more. Um, but when you're when you're shooting in vlog, it's it's hard to you know you need to have your waveform up and, and things like that. It's hard to see your actual picture. I haven't really dove into that kind of stuff yet. At 2000 ISO or if you use gain whatever, um, it's just not even usable. And you know the C100 Mark II, you can go to like 20,000 and potentially still use it. Um, this is just very grainy, just blown out. It's terrible. In the back, they have the battery door. I uh, have a big battery in here. It also comes with a smaller battery, which is not over here. And yeah, it has your uh, SDI outs, your video out, um, your HDMIs, DC in, headphones for monitoring audio. I mean, it's an awesome, awesome camera for the price, and I'm definitely gonna keep it until they come out with a camera that does it all. Hope you guys liked the video. It's the Panasonic DVX200, and it's a great camera. Peace.